Hello, good morning. And welcome to the third annual Canvas Lightning Talks. My name is Lucas Weinford. I'm the Executive Director for Digital Education at the Porvoo Center, which means that one of the really most rewarding parts of my job is that I get to work with the educational technology team who oversees the Canvas learning management system as a large part of their work. And here today we will highlight a number of uh, partnerships that we have with faculty as well as hear from some of our Porvoo Center colleagues about how they use Canvas. Now when the Porvoo Center first hosted this event three years ago, we were in the middle of transitioning to Canvas. And one of the many reasons why our community chose Canvas as a learning management system is because it is not a traditional learning management system. Traditional learning management systems over the years locked you into their environment. They required you to use the tools that they developed. Canvas is an open platform. It is a platform that encourages its educational partners to use third-party apps that very easily plug into its environment so that you can meet the specific teaching and learning goals for your university and your faculty. Now, as you can imagine, an open platform, we all know, uh, we think of things like the App Store on iTunes, they become vibrant communities that are continually developing and improving. So what we are going to talk about today is our goal to partner with instructors all around the university to identify ways for educational technology tools to make the teaching and learning process more effective. Today's presentations will focus on tools that create engaging, accessible, and inclusive course sites through the Canvas platform. So today we will hear from Natalia Cordova Sanchez, a lecturer in psychology, who will present on the use of grade scope in a large lecture class. Maria Trumpler, senior lecturer in women's studies, gender and sexuality studies. She will talk about the use of name coach. Eve Zucker, a lecturer in anthropology, will talk about e-reserves through the library system. Michelle Morgan will, is our digital accessibility specialist. She works here in the Porvoo Center as well, in, uh, as well as in ITS. She will discuss the use of Ally and its role in our accessibility initiatives. And then we'll hear from two of our colleagues here at the Porvoo Center Kimberly Barbara Marini, who I believe many, if not all of you know, and if you don't, you will by the end of this event, uh, as well as Brian Pause, who will share updates on some of the pilots that we are currently running in Canvas and some of the ideas that we're looking at toward, or for the fall, I should say. But first, I'd like to introduce Natalia, who will be our first speaker of the day. Natalia, thank you for kicking us off here. to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to tell you about GreatScope, a tool that Yale is piloting. Um, but first, I want to start us off by asking you some, some questions. So if you could go to poleb.com, this will work for not just my presentation, but for the others, so you'll be all set. Follow these instructions. Are we good to go? I believe it is. <coughs> Getting a sense. Yeah? Are we good? OK. So if you could just respond to these questions, basically select all that apply to you. So if you successfully logged on, these should be showing up on your device and just click on all of the ones that, that apply to you. And if you're not in the classroom right now, they've applied in the past, maybe. Um, and if you've never been in the classroom, maybe you've heard your colleagues uh, talk about some of these, complain about some of these. And you can continue to respond, but I've gotten enough responses that, oh, <laughs> I know how to do this. I definitely know. All right, here you go. So. Lots of these apply to lots of you, is what I'm seeing here. So I think that our time together will be helpful. That's what I'm, that's what I'm hoping. So first of all, what is GradeScope? GradeScope, as you might be guessing, um, is something about grading. Um, it's basically a grading software that leverages the strengths of computers and artificial intelligence to streamline a lot of the grading process. What I'm hoping to convince you of today is that regardless of your subject matter and class size, there might be benefits to you. We'll see. 
So but just a preview, uh, Gradescope helps um, the teaching team, the people doing the grading, by streamlining the management portion of grading, by cutting down on grading time significantly, especially for some types of classes and some assignments, um, helping you grade consistently and fairly across students, and by getting a better sense of how the students are engaging um, with the assignments. But I also hope to convince you that there's benefits to the students, in part as a downstream consequence of all the benefits for the teaching team, um, because the students, just for example, get quicker feedback and great turnaround, which is huge for learning. I keep not using that. So, um, Canvas, uh, Gradescope is synced with Canvas. Uh, it's one of these third-party apps. So once you link your courses with great, um, on Gradescope, uh, the, your site might look something like this. And I'm showing you mine because I want to highlight the variety of classes in which I've used Gradescope. Um, so I'm teaching a class, a seminar, a lab-based class um, this semester with 14 students and one teaching fellow. But I'm also teaching this large 400 student class with nine teaching fellows. Last semester, I taught a class with five students and no teaching fellows. So it was just me grading the exams of five students. And I still found Gradescope to be helpful. So um, let's see, what, why, why is it so helpful? Well, let's start with the AI assisted grading. So, um, for some types of assignments in particular, so think multiple choice or short responses, um, you, you can use artificial intelligence, Gradescope uses artificial intelligence to group similar responses. <coughs> Basically avoid grading each question one by one. So this is what you do. You upload your assignment template, your blank exam, blank ass assignment to, to Gradescope. And you tell them where your questions are. So in this example, um, I have multiple choice questions. So I'm just telling it where, I'm telling Gradescope, I'm telling the computer where it can find each of the questions. But I do this for all of them. I do uh, all the questions. I do this for mul uh, short response questions too. For multiple choice questions, I can ask it to group similar responses. And so as you can see here, there's going to be, because I have four options in this multiple choice example, there can be four groups, right, at most. So as you can see here, 375 students chose a response C. Maybe you can't see it. Um, 10 students chose A, and so on and so forth. So how do I grade? I just mark each of these responses as being correct or incorrect. And so just with basically like four clicks, I've graded the 400 uh, responses for this particular question. So like I said, here is me grading one instance of this group. I mark it as correct because in this case it was. And like that, with the click of a button, I've graded 375 responses. I do this for the other ones too. Uh, for the other responses, they'll be incorrect. And I, it, it's even better. So I just click on the incorrect one, um, take off the points. And I, it's even better if I write there what the correct response would, was, because then the students can see that. So that tool is super powerful. And um, if you have an assignment that lends itself well to that, that is amazing. But even for questions that you have to grade one by one, short response, there's going to be a variety of responses, it still can be super helpful. Why? Because you maybe have experience with this. It's better to just grade all of one question for all the students back to back, right? But what do you have to do? You have to flip through the pages and your stack of exams. Well, here your stack is on this computer. You just click Next Ungraded, and it shows up. And, and the next question for the, the next instance of that same question will show up on your screen. Um, it's really easy, too, to divide grading amongst different people in your teaching team. Um, it just won't show up a question. It won't show you a question that's already been grading unless graded, unless you are specifically looking for it. All right. So you can uh, divide up the grading amongst uh, teaching uh, amongst a teaching team very, very easily. So that's really great. But here's another feature. Um, so some of you responded that you find yourself giving similar feedback to different students, right? So here, you can kind of build your, your toolkit of responses, say. So this is just an example of me grading a multi uh, short answer question. Um, and so say I want to 
um, take off some points or just mention that the student didn't mention concept X, say. So I write that down and I say, oh, I'll take off half a point because you, you, you should have mentioned blah, 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 right? Now, when I, when I click next on graded, I'm grading the next student's response, I can use that same feedback, just click on that button. And as you can see, you know, think about it, you're, you're giving the same wording to the, to the student, and it's, a, and, and it's um, attached to the same point value, right? So this helps with consistency and fairness across students. And of course, you don't have to repeat yourself over and over again. Um, so give consistent feedback across students. Also, has it ever happened to you that you're halfway through the stack of exams and you change your mind? I really shouldn't have taken off half a point. I really should have taken off a quarter of a point, for example. You can change the point value or the feedback, the wording, for one instance, and it changes it for the whole stack that you've already gone through. That's huge. In, in our case, with 400 students, it's been incredible. Um, once you are done grading, this adds everything up. It constructs, the, it gives you a huge spreadsheet with all the statistics that you might have wanted and more. Uh, it, with a click of a button, you can post the grades to Canvas. With another click, you can write an email to students to say their exams are available, and they can go to Gradescope to check them out. I've received zero emails from students saying that they don't know how to access their exams, so this works. Uh, also, something that I want to highlight here, yeah, for, with 400 students, I would have received an email. Um, something that I want to highlight, too, is the statistics for each question. Did everybody get a particular question right? Did a lot of people not get a question right? You can get that information very easily, so you can go to the classroom empowered with this information about how the students are engaging with the material, which is huge. Their customer service team is amazing. They have uh, uh, somebody whose title is customer happiness, and I can attest to how well she does her job. Um, and yeah, so if you have any questions, uh, I'll be hanging out afterwards. Let me know. I'll try to convince you to use Gradescope. in a rubric uh, into grade scope and that's how you are able to like pull those responses yeah okay. yeah so that's me writing that down now maybe your question is do you have to do that beforehand you can do it as you go so depending on what kind of responses you receive you write your feedback in and then you can keep reusing it yeah yeah how do you use um, speed grader how yeah. different from this is it it's it's different in a lot of ways. So speed grader, like the students are doing this already on, on the computer, right? So it's already there. Um, I've, I use that too, uh, simultaneously. So we can talk more afterwards because I think time's up, but yeah, let's talk more about that. Thank you.